The story of OSI, like many land trusts, starts in a place. Over the past 50 years, OSI's conserved a quarter million acres in New York State, a third of that over 80,000 acres in the Hudson Valley. What we want to do is ensure that a place like Sterling Forest or a Scunamuck or Fonstock or Minnewaska is more than just a green sort of spot on a map. It is a place that people come to, use, and love. Groups like Open Space Institute make sure that public spaces in the Hudson Valley have public access and knit together protected lands into a much larger landscape of protected places. In large part, the impact of OSI in the Hudson Valley is because of Bob Anderberg and the fact that he has committed his life, he's committed his soul, he's committed his being to conserve this landscape. Conservation requires at least three things, patience, persistence, and perseverance, and Bob embodies all three. At age 15, I came here on a rock climbing trip. It was a beautiful April day with crystal clear skies. And I looked up and I saw these gleaming white cliffs and it was transformative. I always thought that the setting aside of land was one of the most selfless acts a person could do. I thought it was a noble pursuit and I wanted to be part of it. And it became my life's work. There's really been a cultural shift in the purpose of land conservation. You know, in the old days, if it's wilderness, you bought it and left it alone, right? You sort of locked it up. What we are trying to do now is unlock open space. And we've been unlocking open space in a number of ways. Emblematic to that is River to Ridge. It is on the border of New Paltz and it takes people up to the Shwanka Ridge. We spent about $6 million creating a wonderful trail. And at the height of COVID, we saw quarter million people or so using it in every imaginable way. Building vast assemblages like this, it takes patience, it takes capital, it takes a willingness to assume risk. This transaction was the confluence of great land conservation and working with great conservationists in terms of the board of the Open Space Institute and the Smiley family. OSI has invested millions of dollars in restoration of carriage roads, trailways, and more land acquisition that is bringing more people, more diverse people, to landscapes that can accommodate them, but also will benefit them. When I think about groups like Open Space Institute, they act as a convener, as a partner to so many of the local land trusts who are here. OSI, working with the Walk Hill Valley Land Trust, acquired the Rosendale Trestle, turning it into a truly premier pedestrian walkway, serving Ulster County. I'm really excited to think about what the future brings, thanks to the work that OSI has done over the last many decades, but also I think about where we're going and think about the leadership that they bring to this community. I'm really looking forward to the next five to 10 years because I think there'll be some really interesting conservation, which I think will benefit the increased demand, increased population, and indeed the climate resilience that we need as we think about our futures. You know, so often when we talk about legacy, the, the conversation turns to the number of acres, the number of dollars, and how many deals you've done. I almost view it differently. For me to understand OSI's legacy, I get out of bed on a Saturday morning and I go out. And I see people wandering the River to Ridge Preserve, you know, marveling at the views of Mohawk and the Shawanga Ridge. The Hudson River Valley and New York State is replete with places that, but for OSI, would have been developed. They would not have been open to the general public. And it's been a real joy to see places come into the public domain and become such a part of the fabric of the people who live here.